Hi everyone and welcome back to another teaching and learning video. Today I want to give you an overview of the brand new redesigned TNL website. So as you know over the last three years or so I've been creating a lot of technology onboarding information and resources that you can use whether you're teaching a class or whether you're thinking about any number of areas of professional development. So I really wanted to do a total reboot of the website there were some great suggestions on the recent TNL survey that Dr. Risden sent out prior to Ray Gamba coming on board here. And I wanted to incorporate that to really create something brand new that's easier to use, that has much more clarity in terms of layout, organization, diving in the resources, and so forth. And in fact, I'm excited to be working with Ray to help define some of the onboarding information here. This is something really that I can't do by myself. I need the instruction office helping out if there's any compensation or work uh, load issues with faculty training or getting onboarded. We have to go through negotiations, of course. And then also there's a human resources component because HR does so much in terms of onboarding prior to passing on uh, brand new faculty to payroll for their payroll information. And then also on to the instruction office with Kelsey and Sarah and others to get them set up on their email get them into Canvas with Michael Miguel and so forth. So there's a lot that's going to change with the onboarding tab here. So I just wanted to mention that to you as you uh, start working through the new TNL website. Again, this is ltccteachingandlearning.com and it'll take you to the website. I can show you here, it's also great to use on your uh, smartphone, your, your uh, small device, your iPhone, whatever you have. Um, it's set up in such a way that it works seamlessly in both formats. So that's kind of exciting. And in fact, I use it sometimes just on my iPhone. I find like it's quicker to scroll through, through stuff using the iPhone itself. So just to take you through this, I'm going to be reworking the home page. Ray has some suggestions here. So I want to condense this and actually this will be the same information that you see, uh, college information. This is my old LTCC 101 segment and I try to keep these that were still relevant. So learning about the one stop, learning about financial aid, learning about student housing, connect, advance, the library, the foundation, research office, the president's office and so forth. What I'm probably going to do is just take the home page and condense this and put these in smaller sub pages that'll be hidden from the menu because I want to keep the menu to one, two, three, four, five, six items so you don't have a lot to scroll through and it displays neatly at the top of the banner here. But everything you see here, I'm going to move and shift just to make it a little easier to use because I know there's somewhat um, a bit of information on that home page. So the home page will probably just be a welcome. It'll have um, the social media information, the contact, and then the map at the bottom. If you're off campus and you want to get directions to the college, you could just click on that through Google Maps and find your way to LTCC. So that's pretty handy. Next, you'll have the onboarding section. And this is, again, in progress. And one of the things I did here was I added a banner quote at the top of the page, kind of cool educational quotes to maybe get us motivated. And then uh, this welcome page has some welcome from our uh, faculty and also from me. And then this is kind of my cover letter, which I'm going to change that I typically send out to all new faculty coming on board to give a sense of what's here. And then all this information to come here the onboarding process, getting your, your new class started. I just had a meeting with a couple new faculty members and worked them through or talked them through some of this information. I'm going to rework this based on everything that I get from the instruction office and HR and maybe our association to get a sense of what the onboarding process might look like. Is it something formal? Will you get credit for it? Will you be paid? Is it something that is informal and more recommended or voluntary basis? Not really sure. There's also an accompanying Canvas shell that goes along with the teaching and learning website. And so you can also use that and take uh, part in that self-paced uh, set of tutorials that guide you through some of the same information. So the onboarding stuff will probably look different here as we move into the new year. Now the teaching stuff I think is really good. I have the various teaching tracks introduced here. And at the very beginning you have some foundations. And by the way, this layout here is entirely brand new. What I did was I went through Canva and I'll just show you what this looks like. Because it's, it's, it's a little bit of a process going through this and trying to create brand new banners for all of my videos and everything I've been working on. So you can see at the bottom here, I created brand new 
uh, thumbnails that go along with all the resources. And there are hundreds of these because I have quite a few resources. And I tried to theme these in such a way that it'll be uh, easy for you to navigate through. It'll be something that you can easily understand. So the foundations refer to any kind of pedagogical foundations you might find useful as an instructor. So tips and tricks, various techniques. Differences between being a full and part-time instructor. You might have some questions about that. Uh, handouts, book orders, student emotions, evaluations from your students, course rosters, and I'm not gonna go through all these and so forth. So you can just scroll through all these. On a phone, it will also scroll through, so you can you can look at all these. And then if you find one you like, like if you want to learn about the resources available to you, you click on that. If it's a YouTube video, it'll take you to YouTube. And a lot of these are not only closed caption, but they are often time indexed at the bottom, so you can jump around. I think you'll find it really easy to use in terms of all these resources. So again, just keep scrolling to the right until you find something, and then click on it. So I try to simplify this. I put this all in various sections, and then by the way, it's accessible. So if you want the accessible version, it's found here. If you don't want to scroll through these, which I do have the alt tags on, I know some of you will, will appreciate that as well. And then you could click on the foundations here, the same information, but in text format. Click on this, and then it takes you to that resource. Each of these has a welcome statement as well. And then when you get to them, like face-to-face uh, -face teaching, again, keep scrolling right. And when you find something you want to use, click on that. The same list is available here as well. And then, of course, we move into our next modality, which is DE teaching. So I have an introduction to this, the basics of DE, everything from online presence to class pedagogy, DE class policies, what is enhanced virtual education, and so forth. So keep scrolling and find the video or resource that you want and click on it. And then the same list is available here in a text format list. Then we have the DE blocks. This was something we did through the old CBC OEI grant back a number of years when Katie Myers was here and Brad and Treva and others worked on this. And I created this resource specifically for the grant they're really good short videos. I wanted to keep these. So if you're at all interested, what I recommend, again, is just scroll through this and click on the resource that you want. A lot of these are, are as short as two minutes in length, so they're really easy to digest and to watch. Again, the text list is available here as you go through it. Now, I know in the fall, I hope I'm not jumping the gun here, but I know ISP is changing their name and rebranding as LTCC Rising Scholars. I don't know if this is the right acronym, but I needed an acronym since we're moving away from ISP, so I put LTCCRS. I assume that that's the, the new acronym. So um, I'm not trying to jump the gun here, but I was trying to get this uh, going here in the summer. So if you want to get the introduction to what we called in the past ISP and now LTCCRS, click on any of the videos here, you'll hear from Shane and Tori. There might be one or two videos with Garrett who moved on, um, and a couple of these where he talks about packets and student envelopes. I thought it was important to still keep these resources there since we haven't done new videos. Again, if you want the text version of the list, scroll down here. Uh, next, we have faculty professional development. For example, Mike Spina did an overview of the contract. You can click on that and check that out. I did an overview on committees. And then other things ranging from faculty advancement to post-pandemic teaching and learning, department branding, creating a website, avoiding burnout, teaching race, talking about mental health and civic engagement. So if any of these topics interest you, these are really beyond teaching in a lot of cases, but deal with more global faculty issues or mental health issues or issues related more to what we call professional development or PD, feel free to click on any of these. And as usual, you have the list of the text version of this. And then I also have students. So any of the workshops we've done on student engagement, on nurturing, student behavior and emotions, values and teaching, dealing with FERPA in your DE class videos, dealing with plagiarism. So very student-focused videos or resources, class writing as an example, are included on the students' videos and resources. So feel free to look at any of these and engage with the materials. If any of these are really exciting to you, we can do further workshops in some of these areas. And then I have, as usual, the text list here as well. So I think that's really great information to have under the teaching tab. Everything is centralized just on teaching. Click on that and it'll take you there. And then next we have workshops. So 
Anything that I do in terms of a teaching talk, anything that I do in terms of another workshop will be included here. The upcoming ones for fall and winter and spring will always be at the top of the page. So you can click on those and I will ask you to reach out to me for the Zoom link because I don't want to be Zoom bombed here on the web. And I will always send out email versions of this where I give you that Zoom link that you can use to log on for our workshops. I'll continue to do the teaching talks um, in the fall, 12 to 1, put those on Zoom. We can do some of those in person as well, depending on room issues and room availability. And then if any of the things are going to be archived, and I don't always record every single teaching workshop because if there's a confidential matter or something sensitive, and we don't want that going out to the wider world without releases from the participants, I'm not gonna include that in general. So just, just be aware of that not everything will be recorded. I make a judgment call based on what I think might be a sensitive topic or not and decide whether to record that or not. Now in 2021, 2022, we did a technology grant through the foundation. So I include all of those for you here, all the workshops that were created. Thank you to all the participants who did those workshops for us. And then these are mainly the teaching talks and other workshops. So you'll see the description, they're always in chronological order. So our latest ones will be at the top here, going down to the most distant ones that were back uh, three or, or up to four years ago. And then if there is a video, just click on the video replay link. If there's a handout, click on that. That handout will come up and it's handy to have that because it really gives you the information that you need specific to that teaching talk. And there are quite a few of these. Uh, starting in the fall, we're going to be in uh, over number 70 or so. And you can also click on the handouts at the bottom, which are also archived here. So all the workshops and trainings always on the workshops tab. Next we have the technology tab of the website. So this is anything related to instructional technology. And by the way, I was recently reading a really good report. And this report is by the famous consulting firm McKenzie and Company. And I love the title of this, How Technology is Shaping Learning and Higher Education. I really advise you to look at this. They're saying that a lot of the COVID technologies that we ended up using are coming to play a really big role even as we move beyond the pandemic, getting back to face-to-face -face teaching or continuing to do DE teaching. And I just love the focus on technology. And there's a lot of emphasis here that students want entertaining and efficient tools. So I would call these immersive or experiential design tools. But this is the interesting thing, and this shows you why we need to continue to leverage technology. Look at the headline. And again, this is one of the world's best management consulting firms. They're literally at the top of the game in all areas, not just technology or certainly education. They say here, faculty embrace new tools but would benefit from more technical support and training. So I really see my role as integral connecting to technology because technology is something that all of us do. Going back to the old chalkboard or the whiteboard today, the whiteboard is a form of technology and you have to even think about how to efficiently use a whiteboard in the classroom. Certainly all this stuff that we use in our everyday teaching and trainings, those are forms of technology. So we can't forget how important technology is in terms of this whole picture. So I recommend you look at this entire report. I thought it was really amazing and eye-opening in terms of some of these emphases. So going back to the website, you'll find this laid out in some different big broad chunks. So first would be anything that's general technology. So we did a technology summit or we could talk about using Canva to create graphics or how can games and apps be used in the world of teaching. As usual the text list is always at the bottom of the slide deck if you will or the image deck and again just click on that image and it'll take you immediately to the video or the resource whatever it happens to be. Next we have Canvas. And I include in here a few of the big tip sheets I did. These are intended really for new instructors. You'll see once we figure out the onboarding stuff that this will become a part of the TNL onboarding, the instruction office onboarding, whatever that looks like. So this is really great. For any of these, you just want to make sure you download to the computer because the links work um, if you download the PDF. Just make sure you do it that way and don't try to click the links here directly on the site. So anything you want to learn about Canvas, all the workshops and trainings I've done over the years, you're going to find here. These are all arranged by topics and you see the topic heading at the bottom. And again, the graphic is really trying to be like iconographic, almost like hieroglyphic in terms of representing something. So you have 
uh, tips and tricks, you know, being a magician, pulling a rabbit out of a hat, or creating a navigation video being kind of like navigation points like we might see on Google Maps or something like that. Again, you see the text list here if you'd rather click on text links. Next we have Zoom, so any of the Zoom videos, the basics, Zoom checkup workshop, top 10 Zoom, Zoom office hours, webcams, privacy, Zoom updates, etc. You'll find this all here. And then again, the text list. Anything related to video and audio, so all this kind of stuff that I love talking to you about and I have a lot of expertise in, in covering and doing my in my own professional work, whether it's uh, working on uh, films or working on music or vocal production for podcasts or whatever, um, all of this is included here for you. So FERPA blurs, the value of video, quick video, all of these are listed here and you can scroll through. And then here's the text list. Anything that's an app or technology I have included here. So if you want to learn Canva, if you want to learn about um, Proctorio or using the gradebook or a Jamboard or brainstorming apps or name coach or chunking time, games and apps, quizzes, these are all included. And you can get the text list. Quite a few of these I've done over the years. And then I did, starting last year, the Tiny Tech uh, video series. I'm continuing to do it this year. So these are short videos, like five minutes in length, that tell you something important about an app or a form of technology, like a visual timer, open source audio, immersive view in Zoom, um, iPhones. I'm doing a few new ones this year on how to use your iPhone to scan chunks of text from books and then easily bring that in as an OCR, or optical character reader technology, so you don't have to retype stuff in, inside of your Canvas classes. So I would find a lot of these to be real time savers for you in your everyday teaching life. Again, I'm using my technical and technological expertise and knowledge that I study on a weekly basis, reading tech blogs, going to YouTube, watching really boring tech videos that I enjoy, and then passing that information on to you because you likely don't have time to study all that on your own with your busy schedules. So it's one of the resources I try to provide to you. And then at the bottom is the text link. So anything under technology will always be found under the tech banner um, or a menu um, item at the top. And then lastly would be reports. So if you want my year-end reports, these are all included here. Just click on the download. The most recent one is found here. And if you want to interact with any of these, if you have, these have links, again, click the download button here. And then if there is uh, an interactive component that you click on, that is best done on the actual PDF itself as opposed to looking at it on the web browser as I'm doing now. So you can scroll through any of that. And then if you li would like to look at the video version of all of these, the year-end report or my convocation welcome videos you'll find this on this tab so this is definitely a shorter one click on that and you can check out all of the various reports and then anytime click the home to go home or you could click the LTCC link here and that'll take you back home and then I have this splash banner of some images that I took that kind of adds some visual interest I don't want to make it too splashy or too um, you know technical or flashy but it has just enough I think to kind of keep your interest I did this from uh, the ground up I looked at every single resource I created every training every video, everything that was done for the CBC OEI grant and reintegrated this into the new website. This is live as of the first part of August here in 2022. Again, when I hear more from instruction and HR and the negotiation team, if they have ideas, we'll talk about the onboarding tab and changing that. So that's gonna look quite different in the future as will shortening the home page um, information based on Ray's uh, feedback this summer. So I hope you get a chance to look it over. If you have suggestions or ideas for other things to include, other resources, other technologies, let me know and I'd be very happy to include that here on the new TNL website. So enjoy it here as we start fall 2022. Reach out with any questions or concerns and I'll be back with additional videos here in LTCC Teaching and Learning.